Hi, my name is Katie Abbott, and I'm a Scripps Gerontology Center Research Fellow and Assistant Professor at Miami University. I've worked in the field of gerontology for over 20 years, and during this time, I've witnessed a real shift in the field of long-term services and supports. We've gone from using a strictly medical model of care to creating a culture of person-centered care. The culture of person-centered care values nursing home residents being able to express their preferences and make decisions about how they live their lives based on those preferences. We all have preferences for everyday living, such as do we like coffee or tea in the morning, or do we like to get up early or sleep in a bit later? These preferences don't simply go away when we find ourselves living in a long-term care setting. We've developed the Preferences for Everyday Living Inventory, or PELI for short, to help organizations get to know their residents and use that information to deliver more personalized care. Conducting these interviews with nursing home residents and using that information to help create resident care plans is an effective strategy for implementing person-centered care. In this short video, we will share strategies for conducting PELI interviews with nursing home residents. By showing you real situations we have encountered, we will give tips for completing the resident preference assessment in a way that fosters relationships and provides quality information. This video is hosted by my colleague, Jennifer Heston, a licensed social worker who began her career as a nursing assistant. We hope you find this to be a helpful educational tool. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Hi. How are you doing today? Fine. Just watching an old movie. Is now a good time for me to ask you a few questions, or would you prefer I come back when you're finished with the movie? Oh, now it's fine. Come on in. Okay. Just gonna pull up a chair. All right. Do you mind if I turn the TV off so I can hear you a little better? Sure. I've seen this movie dozens of times. It's my favorite. Okay. Let's stop here for a moment and review what Morgan did well. She knocked on Mrs. Jones's door, which demonstrates her respect for the resident's privacy. If the resident has a roommate, it's important to choose a time when the roommate is not in the room. This also shows that the interviewer is respecting the resident's privacy. Morgan then asked if it was okay to turn off the TV so that the Pelly interview could be conducted in a quiet space with limited distractions. If a resident indicates that they want to continue their activity, the interviewer should apologize for the interruption and then ask the resident when would be a good time for her to come back for the interview. You wear glasses, don't you? What'd you say? I said I'm going to look for your glasses and also your hearing aid. Okay, by the bed on the table. Okay. Here's your hearing aid. Thank you. And here are your glasses. Ah, thank you. There. Can you see and hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great. Let's stop here and review what we just saw. Before even starting the interview, Morgan made sure that Mrs. Jones had her glasses and hearing aid so that she could participate actively in the interview process. She then made sure to sit eye level with Mrs. Jones and not stand over her. All right, I think we're ready to get started. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your preferences so that we can best meet your needs while you're with us. Okay. When you respond to the questions, I'd like you to use these response options. You can either say something is very important, somewhat important, not very important, not important at all, or important but you feel you can't do it or you have no choice. For example, I may ask you how important is it for you to go outside. Mm -hmm. You may say, that's very important. Or you might say, that's important but you feel you can't do it anymore. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. Okay. The first question I have is, how important is it to you to choose what name you'd like me to use when I greet you? Well, my name is Geraldine, but I like to be called Jerry. And would you say that's very important or somewhat important? Very important. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'll be sure to call you Jerry from now on. I like to be called Morgan. Okay, that's great. You know, no one's ever asked me that question before. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. The next question is, how important is it to you? To in this section, in the Morgan is engaged and listening to what Mrs. Okay. Jones, Jerry, is saying. She asked next. the follow-up questions when Jerry indicated that a particular team. preference was of importance to her and skipped to the next question when an activity was not. This is a great example of how a Pelly interview with a resident should go. 
However, we've seen interviews that don't always go this well for a variety of reasons. For the remainder of this training video, we'll illustrate some ways that the Pelly interview can be difficult for both resident and interviewer and offer examples for how the process can become a relationship building opportunity. Jerry, how important is it to you to participate in religious services or practices? That's not too important. Really? I'm surprised. God is everything to me. Oh, I guess religion is important. <laughs> Good. I knew you had to be a religious person. You're too nice not to be. In this instance, Morgan placed judgment on the resident for saying that religion was not important to her. After sensing this, Jerry changed her answer to meet Morgan's expectations. The goal of conducting Pelly interviews is to gain a better understanding of residents' important preferences so that the organization can try to meet them as much as possible, a hallmark of person-centered care. An interviewer should work hard not to put words into the residents' mouths or lead them to answer questions in any particular way. People can sense when interviewers are passing judgment on them or looking for a specific answer. In response, they may change their answers to please the interviewer. If residents don't feel comfortable sharing their preferences, then the purpose of the Pelly interview is completely lost. Now you will see an example of how an interviewer could respond when he or she does not share the same preference as a resident. How important is it for you to participate in religious services or practices? That's not too important to me. Okay. How important is it to you to participate in your cultural tradition? As you can see in this example, really Morgan sure. asked the question, listened to Jerry, marked down the correct answer choice, and then proceeded to the next question. Here you can't tell that the interviewer doesn't share the same preference as the resident. Next, you will see an example of asking Pelly questions that may be perceived as sensitive or personal. You know, this next question is really personal, and I know I wouldn't want to answer it, but I have to ask it anyway. How important is it to you that your daily caregiver knows your needs when going to the bathroom? <laughs> that is a personal question. Why do you have to ask something like that? You're right. Let's move on. There are questions on the Pelly that may be perceived as very personal or sensitive, such as questions about going to the bathroom or who is involved in the resident's medical care. In this example, Morgan introduces the question by saying she wouldn't want to answer it. By doing this, she undermines the purpose of the Pelly. When Jerry hesitates, Morgan just moves on. Here is an example of how you can present potentially sensitive or personal questions. Jerry, how important is it to you that your daily caregiver knows your needs when going to the bathroom? Well, that's quite a personal question. Why do you need to know that? I know it's a personal question, but your answer to these personal questions will really help us take better care of your needs while you're with us. Besides, we all have to go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> That's true. Well, then I suppose it is somewhat important. And what would you like your daily caregiver In to know instance, about In this instance, Morgan approached the question with a well, neutral really attitude and tone. When Jerry expressed concern over the personal nature of the question, Morgan assured her that the question is being asked so that the care team can better meet her needs. Of course, residents can always refuse to answer questions if they wish to, even if the interviewer provides a clear explanation for why the question is being asked. Next, we'll look at a situation when a resident may become sleepy during the interview. How important is it for you to be around animals such as pets? Jerry. How important is it for you to be around animals such as pets? <sighs> I really wanted to get this done today. This is an example of how not to respond to a resident who is tired and sleepy. In this case, it's simply best to make a note of your place in the Pelly interview and come back at another time. Let's see an example of how an interviewer can use a better approach. Okay, how important is it for you to be around animals such as pets? Jerry. How important is it for you to be around animals such as pets? It looks like you're getting tired now. I'm going to mark where we stopped and we can pick up there tomorrow. In this example, Morgan noticed that Jerry was getting tired and stopped the interview. She let Jerry know that she would return the following day. She also marked down the stopping place so that she knows where to pick up with the interview when they meet again. Hi Jerry, it's nice to see you again today. Hi Morgan. Would now be a good time to finish the interview we started yesterday? Yes. 
I am so sorry. I think I fell asleep yesterday. It was my nap time, what can I say? That's all right, we all get tired. Here's your response card, and why don't we pick up where we left off? Okay. Okay, Jerry, how important is it to you to be around animals such as pets? Oh, that's somewhat important. I used to have a little dog, and she was such company. I like to hold her and pet her. She was a good dog. I have a dog too, and I love to hold and pet her as well. What other kind of animals do you like to be around? Well, mostly dogs. Uh, cats make me sneeze. And what other types of contact do you enjoy with animals? Just holding and petting. Okay. How important is it to you to have regular contact with friends? Um, they're all dead. Oh, I'll mark not very important. Let's move on to a happier question. In this example, a question was asked that made Jerry feel emotional, which made Morgan feel uncomfortable. She wants to rush on to the next question to avoid the emotional response from Jerry. By marking down, not very important, Morgan is putting words in Jerry's mouth, and now the resident does not get to fully answer and reflect on the question. Let's see how this type of response could be approached differently. How important is it for you to have regular contact with friends? Uh, well, they're all dead. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, they passed away a couple years ago, and oh, we used to have such good times together. Dinners out and card games. Oh my, I'm the only one of the group left. Sounds like you had great memories with them. Mm -hmm. I know you miss them, but is there anyone here that you enjoy regular contact with? Well, I, I know Genevieve and Iris down the hall. And how do you like to stay in contact with them? Well, we have meals together a couple times a week, and uh, we, we've been talking about going out for a dinner, you know, a ladies' night out, but none of us can drive anymore. Well, I'm sure we could arrange something. You could? That would be wonderful. In contrast to the previous example, Morgan listened carefully to the resident and immediately noticed that she was becoming sad. Instead of rushing on to the next question, Morgan allowed Jerry time to reflect on her past friendships. She then moved on to get some more information about who Jerry enjoys regular contact with now. As an interviewer, you may sometimes be uncomfortable because you feel as if you're upsetting the resident with your question. That is a perfectly normal feeling, and it's not your fault. It's your role to listen to the resident's responses and record what they say. In the next example, we will learn how to respond when a resident indicates that an activity is important, but they can no longer do it. My next question is, how important is it to you to take care of the place where you live? Well, that's important, but I can't do it anymore. That's too bad. I mean, I, I feel like, almost like I have nothing to do. Well, on to the next question. How important is it that you go outside to get fresh air? When the this was a good? missed opportunity to engage with the resident and learn why she felt she could no longer do the activity. Morgan just accepted what Jerry said and didn't explore additional information. She could have asked the follow-up questions before proceeding. It may upset a resident if the interview asks a question and does not take time to learn more about what's important to him or her. The next scene shows another way to respond to the answer, important but cannot do. How important is it for you to take care of the place where you live? Well, that's important, but I can't do it anymore. Why do you say you can't do it anymore? Because I live here. They have people that do everything for you. They cook, they clean, they do the laundry. Well, I know it's these people's jobs, and I'm very happy that they're doing it. I appreciate it, but, you know, sometimes you just want to do things yourself. Well, that makes sense. What kind of things would you like to do on your own? Well, I, I could fold my own laundry. I could hang my own clothes in the closet to, and dust. I could dust my room. I get a little nervous sometimes when people are moving things around. I could dust. Is there anything else you'd like to do on your own, like tending to plants? In this decorating? example, Making Morgan tries to better understand why Jerry no longer feels she can take care of the place where she lives. She also uses the detailed questions to get a better understanding of what Jerry used to like to do. In the next example, we'll see why it's important to get detailed information about how important a preference is to the resident. Jerry, how important is it to you to go outside and get fresh air when the weather's good? 
oh, that's important to me. And which types of weather do you like to go outside in? Well, when it's sunny and warm, it's nice, but I even like to go outside when it's cold because that's a breath of fresh air and that's good. I agree, I like that too. Now, it may appear as if Morgan did this the right way. However, she failed to determine if going outside was very important or somewhat important, or if it was important but Jerry couldn't do it anymore. Making the distinction between how important the resident views a particular preference can help staff prioritize people's preferences. Let's try this one again. How important is it to you to go outside to get fresh air when the weather's good? Oh, it's important. Would you say it's very important, somewhat important, or important but you feel you can't do or you don't have a choice? Well, it's important but I can't do because I don't have a choice. Why do you say you don't have a choice? Well, first off, it's this wheelchair and uh, I didn't want to ask anybody. People here are so busy, I, I didn't want to be a bother. I know what you mean, but it's important to you, so we want to make sure you get the opportunity to go outside. Plus, there's other residents who enjoy that. Maybe we should schedule an activity out on the courtyard. Oh, that'd be nice. And which types of weather do you like to go outside? Mm, warm and sunny is the best. But, you know, even if it's cold outside, it's good to go out and get a good breath of fresh air. I know what you mean. What things do you like to do when you go outside? I used to like to walk, but uh, now that's going to have to wait. Uh, but just sitting outside and on the porch and talking to the guests or just being out there, is, that'd be good. I'd like that. And how many times a week do you like to go outside? Every day would be nice. <laughs> I, I don't suppose that's possible, but it'd be nice. Well, I'll be sure to make a note of that and let the team know. Next time I head outside for some fresh air, I'll come down and see if you want to join me. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. As you can see from this example, getting clarification between very important, somewhat important, and important but having no choice provides detailed information that would otherwise not be collected. For instance, by taking the time to learn that going outside is important to Jerry, but she feels like she has no choice, Morgan has some key information to share with the care team. Knowing this information will help them come up with ways to make sure Jerry can go outside on a regular basis. In addition, this example illustrates how the Pelly interview can help providers and residents establish relationships. Here, Morgan let Jerry know that she also enjoys going outside. The last example we have for you today is how to finish a Pelly interview. So it looks like these are the last questions I have for you today. How important is it for you to do your favorite activities? That's very important. I know we already talked about some of those activities today, but what are your favorite activities? Well, like I said, I, I like to keep my room and uh, going outside is, is good. Is there anything else you like to do that we haven't talked about today? Well, I used to be an artist, but I don't have my art supplies with me. <laughs> I don't know if I can even paint anymore. It's been a long time. We do have some arts and crafts activities here. Do you think you would enjoy that? Uh, maybe. Uh, no, actually, I like using my own art supplies, so no. Well, maybe we could contact your daughter and see if she would be willing to bring in some of your personal art supplies. It's a great idea. My daughter liked painting, too. At least she used to. Maybe we could paint together when she comes the next time. Hmm. That sounds like a great idea. Is there anyone else you like to do activities with? No, just painting with my daughter. Okay. So I'm all out of questions. Thank you for spending time with me. It was really great to get to know you. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. In this final example, Morgan thanked Jerry for her time and let her know that she enjoyed getting to know her better. At the end of a Pelly interview, it's very important for the interviewer to thank the resident for his or her time and reassure the resident that the information will be used to provide care that better meets his or her preferences. So let's review some key tips for conducting a successful Pelly interview. First, be sure to have all of the supplies you need before you ask a resident if it's okay to conduct the Pelly interview with him or her. Regardless of the method you use to collect information from a resident, be sure to have a printed copy of the response options in large print available for the resident to use during the interview. Next, locate the resident that you would like to interview and introduce yourself. Then ask the resident if it's a good time for him or her to sit down with you and answer some questions. If the resident indicates that it is not, ask when a better time would be and come back then. 
If the resident indicates that it is a good time, find a private and comfortable setting to conduct the interview. Before starting, make sure the lighting is acceptable and ask if it's okay to turn off any music or the television so that the interview can be conducted with limited distractions. Also, make sure that the resident can see your face and can hear you. This is a good time to check and see if the resident has his or her glasses or hearing aid. Follow the instructions on the first page of the Pelly assessment and now you are ready to begin. When conducting the Pelly interview, it helps to be patient and allow the resident time to collect his or her thoughts and explain their preferences to you. If you feel rushed, the resident will too. If a resident needs time or has not fully answered your question, be sure to follow up and say, is there anything you would like to add? Or can you say any more about that? Or do you need more time? During the interview, be careful not to put words in the mouth of the resident. Allow them to explain their preferences using their own words. This may be challenging for staff who think they already know their residents and what's important to them. In some cases, you may not be able to ask all the Pelly questions in one session. Sometimes residents have therapy or other activities to attend. Other times, like we saw in the video, Residents may become tired and unable to complete the full interview. If this is the case, thank the resident for his or her time and explain that you will return to finish the interview. Other times, you may be short on time and only able to complete part of the interview. In this case, let the resident know how much time you have before beginning and politely excuse yourself when you need to leave. After conducting the Pelly interview, thank the resident for his or her time and tell them you enjoyed getting to know them better. Talking with a resident about their preferences is a meaningful opportunity to develop relationships with residents. The knowledge gained from these conversations is critical to designing truly personalized care and helping residents feel satisfied, cared for, and comfortable with daily life.